Okay. All right, y'all. So I am super excited to have one of my good friends here with me, Sandra, and we are going to talk through several years between the two of us working from home with kids. So we're going to cover like the biggest struggles that we've had over the years. And then some of the things that we have figured out to make it work, to be that work from home mom and just make things a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. So if you want to introduce yourself that everybody kind of learns a little bit about you and then we'll dive in. Yeah, I'm Sandra Hausman. I am a branding and website design um, expert. And so I actually started my business about six years ago. And actually before that, I did um, freelance design. And so I've, I've been doing business stuff really since college, which is a long time ago. And um, so it's been a really long journey, but about six years ago, I really like fully dove into my business. I quit my job. I had a one-year-old at home. I just was like, I can't do this corporate juggle with a baby anymore. Um, and it just worked for our family for me to be able to do that. And so Um, I fully dove in six years ago and um, have pivoted so many times, but um, finally like have found my space in this um, web design. Um, I'm really the strategy behind the web design. So, so I do the web design. I love like a beautiful website, but I would say that my kind of my um, zone of genius is that like strategy behind like how to make it work. Um, so, and then I recently partnered with, um, a good friend, Melissa, and we have also started a business called carbon and clay where we do Squarespace website templates and, um, and we do client work for customers. We build websites and things like that. So, um, so that's what I do. It's truly something that I dreamed of doing when I was younger and, Um, I think one of the things that we'll touch on in a little bit is like, I never thought that I was good enough, um, for some reason to, to do certain aspects of what I do now. And, um, so, so yeah, it's, it really truly is like living a dream. Um, and there's totally struggles. So it's not like, it's just this dreamy, like amazing all the time life. Um, but it is so fun to be able to have my kids at home and, run a business and make money and do it the way that I want to do it on my terms and, um, and structure it the way that I want to structure it. And so, yes, great. Oh my gosh. Yes. All of that. Like, that's the whole reason. That's the whole reason we're here is to just be able to do, do things on our time and our terms for sure. Because when you're working for someone else, that is not the case at all. And I feel like that's what a lot of the people, you know, listening in are going to really be able to relate to is it's just, it's just a struggle to take care of your kids and your family, the way that we want to, like what's been laid on our heart and like still have a job and make money, which is so necessary nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was working. So after my son was born, I went from a full-time marketing director position. Um, I had an amazing job with a smaller business, um, this corporate world. And they basically said, you know, what do you want to do? Like, let us know what you want to do. Like, we'll support you. And so I was like, I want to go part-time. So when I came back from maternity leave, I was able to just work, um, basically 16 hours a week. I worked two full days and was off three, three of the work days a week. And, um, but when it really came down to it, I remember the moment when I was sitting there, I was getting paychecks. It was, it was really not bad. Like it it wasn't bad. I was home. What? Like five of the seven days of the week. It was, it wasn't bad. I I was making money, but I remember looking at one of my paychecks and being like, "Ah, I'm making, I think it was, it was under a thousand dollars, like just under a thousand dollars a month. And I was like, I still have to leave my children. And here I am working freelance, making that in a few hours. (laughs) Like, I mean, and so obviously there's a trade-off of like, you have your steady job, you just get your paycheck Mm -hmm. and having to go find the work. So there's a trade-off in that. But I just remember thinking like, I can make this on my own and I wouldn't have to work that much. Like, So anyways, it was that moment where I was like, I just, I'm, that's what I'm going to work towards. And so I, I just say that because I have a feeling that some of your viewers are probably like some of the people watching this are probably in that same position of like, they feel like they're trading 
dollars and, you know, hours and time and trying to like balance it all. And so there is a, there is a way to be able to make that. And even if your goal is just like $800 a month or $900 a month or a thousand dollars a month. So that was my, that was my position that I was in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is, it was crazy that, you know, you can step back and look at how different it is to make the same amount of money when you're doing it for yourself. Just Mm -hmm. it's, it's mind blowing really like even five years, I'm almost five years in, you know, so just a little after you and it's just, sometimes it's still just it's like surreal that it's possible. I know. Yeah, totally. But I would say, so stepping into that to kind of segue into like some of the struggles of yeah. a work, work, work from home mom. I know when I first started, I, I really tried to research and find blog posts on like how in the world do I actually run a business with a baby? Cause at that time I had a one-year-old yeah, and he was nursing and all the things. And, um, so honestly, I couldn't really find that much out there in the world, like other than work while your baby naps, which wasn't super practical for me at the time because it wasn't for me either. He didn't nap. Like he just on he me. Not, yeah, exactly. Like he would not sleep unless he was on me and it was so hard to work. And so I ended up finding like I ended up um, figuring out how to like lay down on the bed and like work while, while he was nursing. But anyways, so like, you know, there's little things like that, that I figured, like, I also would put him in carriers and mm-hmm. like bounce him in front of the um, kitchen counter. Like I would stand at the kitchen counter and like bounce him and like work from there. But anyways, um, I think just juggling it all, like having the baby and the, um, having the, um, like the client work and the deadlines and the, the house still to clean and, um, uh, hang on just a second, Bob. I'll be out in a little bit. (laughs) Well, you have to stop. Gavin, stop. Oh, okay. I'll go get in a little bit. Thank you. Go out there with daddy. Okay. So this is my life. life. Um, I'll be out in a little bit. Okay. So anyways, juggling all the things, which is still the biggest, like, and now both of us, you, Jenna and I both homeschool, and this is our first year of homeschool. And so figuring out the homeschool aspect, working into that and, and trying to just figure it all out has been a struggle, a constant struggle because every stage is different and it's never the same. Yeah. You never just figure it out because as your kids are growing, like babies would cry, but babies can't open the door and walk in, even though you've asked them not to. (laughs) Exactly. So it's changing because your family's growing and changing and the kids are growing up and there's different, you know, when they're little, you don't have after school activities. You don't have any of those things to, to juggle into your schedule. And so I think that for me, and you can tell me if this has helped you, setting the boundaries with homeschool, I had to completely upend everything because I had to have like solid times where I didn't have to worry about doing any work. I didn't have to worry about a call. And like you, what's nice is you can always make exceptions because when you work online, time zones do become an issue with your schedule. And so needing to have like some flexibility of where like my calendar is blocked off. But when I'm communicating with people, I say like, if you don't find a time because of time zone differences, I don't want you scheduling a call at 3.30 in the morning. And I've had people do that because that's what matches up with my calendar. I'm like, please talk to me. So having the flexibility to like meet people's needs when, when you really need to, but having boundaries to where you don't just randomly have calls all hours of the day. It took me way too long to figure that out because I wanted to be accessible. I wanted to like early on, I did have people schedule calls at like ridiculous times where they had to set an alarm because they were like in Australia. And I'm like, I want to make sure I have like a variety of times throughout the week to really make sure that people don't feel like they have to do that because it just really upset me (laughs) that they felt like that's what it took. But I really had to get firm on those boundaries of like, we do school first thing in the morning, you know, we try to finish by lunch, we have lunch, and then I don't have any opening on my calendar, you know, until after that, because 
I'm, you know, unless it's one of those things where I just really need to, you know, make that shift, that is my solid time to homeschool. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, just that is non-negotiable most of the time. Like if you just find a link and want to schedule a call, that's what you're going to get. It's going to have to be, you know, afternoon and evening. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things where I feel like we almost have to retrain our own mind a little bit too, like, um, to where, like, be, and where I'm going with that is I was thinking about what you're saying about, um, you know, you feel like as a new entrepreneur, like you just have to take everything. You have that, like almost that fear of missing out. Like yes. if I don't accommodate exactly what this person wants, then they might not like, they might not hire me or they might yeah. go the lack of boundaries can come along with that fear because you feel like you need to be accommodating. You feel like you need to be accessible. Yeah. And really that can be very detrimental, not only to your business, but to your family life as well. Yeah. And so there's almost this level of, you have to kind of rework your mind a little bit mm -hmm. to remember why you're doing this and that your family should also take priority and mm -hmm. it should take higher priority. Maybe, you know, that, that would be the case in my life. And, yeah. um, and so you set those boundaries and you remember like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be firm on this. And what I have personally found, and you've probably found this as well, is that when I set those boundaries, people actually respect my time more mm -hmm. versus, you know, if I'm just willing to take anything and everything, and it, it's almost like I'm desperate to take mm -hmm. that take that call at that weird time or, um, or whatever it is like people, it's almost like they can tell, and then they'll just push you and push you and push you as far as they can really. And it's, I don't yeah. think it's, I don't think it's out of, you know, it's not them being mean. It's just the way that it is. Like, you know, the, the natural just, tendency that most people have. Exactly. And so the, the, the firmer boundaries we set, the more I think it actually causes them to respect us in return and treat us more like a legit business, um, yeah. is what I've found as well. And so, yeah, I mean, setting those firm boundaries, um, and I have found that as well. Like I have the biggest thing for me that I have learned over the years is it's kind of a multifaceted thing, but, um, I don't have to see instant success overnight. Like, you know, when I first started and I don't know if it was a combination of what I was around and seeing people say and hearing people say like, um, this, you know, all about the success and growing really fast and making tons of money super fast overnight, you know, whatever. Um, I don't know why I had this in my brain, but it was just like this, like I have to hustle, 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 hustle so fast, so hard because I want that success so fast and mm -hmm. so bad because that's the only way that right. is legitimate to do it. Like that's what you have to do. Right. And so giving that up was so freeing to me and just saying, you know what, I'm going to make this work for my family. And if that means that I make less money a month, or if that means that it takes me longer to grow my business, I mean, I've been doing this six years and there's been a lot of growth, but it's taken six years in a lot of the things, you know, like, I mean, there's continual growth. And so every stage is a little bit more solidified and a little bit, um, better and a little bit easier, but it's, it's just been a constant journey. And, yeah. you know, I wouldn't say there's been a, a time where I've arrived. And, and I think that's also a misconception of like, you know, I have to find my success. I have to like yeah. become super successful. We, you're never going to feel successful. Like there's always going to be another thing to, to, to reach for and achieve a new goal. And there should be like, there should always be new goals, but yeah, it always has to be balanced with your priorities being right. Yeah. Because you need to make sure you're taking care of the first things first, for sure. And then yeah. also you need to be content with where you are and you can still strive to meet new goals because that's yeah. great. Like continue, just like we would never want our children to stop learning and growing and doing better. It's the same things for us in our business, but it's that being content in however long it takes you to get there and keep the first things first, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been big for me that, so I would say the struggle, that struggle, but then also, you know, if we look at what has been helpful, what's helped make it work, um, is letting go of that, that, that idea and retraining my brain to think like, okay, every time I 
grow in something, I'm getting closer and closer and, and better and better, not closer, I would say, because like that is that illusion of like, we're going to arrive, but like Mm -hmm. things are getting better and better. I'm growing more and more. And then, um, just throwing that perfectionism out the window. And also another huge thing that I've learned over the years is that failure is an opportunity for growth. And so, yes. And I use the word failure lightly, you know, um, cause I don't think that failure is ever like failure really in business. It's, it's, like I said, it's just another way that we're learning and growing. And so learning that if I launch something and I don't reach my goals, that's okay. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's not something that should cause me to step back or to think that I'm not good enough or to, you know, think, oh my gosh, maybe I should just give this whole thing up and quit my business. Like, it's just an opportunity to say, okay, what didn't work? What can we try again? And then we're going to give it another go. Like we're going to try basically the same thing again, if that's still the direction we want to go and we're going to tweak it and make it better and then try it again. Um, that's been another huge learning, the learning opportunities that come with things not going the way that you want. Um, I mean, it can also be a really great guide for, I know that there have been a lot of things I've tried to do over the years that have not worked out the way that I wanted. And it has been a guide to get me to what has been best. Yeah. What has been best for my family? What has allowed me, because looking back and saying, man, I never did meet my goals with doing X, Y, Z. And it's because it wouldn't have been sustainable. It would have kept me like hustling. I mean, you've seen tons of changes in my business over the years. And it's just listening to that and taking a step back and evaluating everything and seeing like, okay, you know, this is still the direction I want to go. What do I need to, you know, work on improving? Just really learning from that instead of, for me, it was instead of taking it personally. Mm -hmm. I, my biggest thing would be like, I would take all of the things super personal and it would be like, oh, it's me. I'm terrible. I shouldn't do that at all. But learning that it is always a learning opportunity, not anything against like your personal self. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a difficult thing for, for you to wrap your brain around. And it is just such a learning process and like, rewiring your brain, you know, yeah. to think so much of it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, um, the other thing that I would say I struggled with, with doing all the things and feeling overwhelmed with all the things is that I don't have to do all the things. Yeah. <laughs> and that I think is also another big, um, struggle for newer businesses and, and people who are just getting started and launching their businesses that they do feel like they have to do all the things and they have to learn to do all the things and they have to manage all the things. And so obviously there's a, you've got to balance your finances and where you're at financially, how much money you're making, how much money you can put back into support. But there's, I have learned that there's so many ways to get support that is also maybe not monetary. Like, um, you know, you can trade work with people you can, um, you can even just surround yourself with like-minded other people doing this, um, who have other skills and even just having people to bounce things off of and do business with, um, socially is a huge help. But, um, you know, when you can hire out things that is so helpful. And I would even say that that's kind of essential to growth in business. Um, you know, at some point you're going to have to hire things out in order to really scale. maybe not right at the beginning, but just getting that in your mind and starting to think through, okay, what can I get off my plate? What can I hand to someone else? And a lot of times you can find, you know, I've found college students who, um, are able to do some sort of VA work or, um, I've found, you know what I mean? So there's so many different ways to get off your plate in a reasonable, um, like reasonably financially, you know, way. And so, um, I think getting things off your plate as quickly as you can is and not taking too much onto your plate when you are just getting started would be my side of that is keeping things as simple as possible 
Because when you're first starting out, you need to focus on the income generating tasks. I just wrote an email that I'm getting ready to send out. That's like my top three mistakes. And that's one of them is trying to do so many things right from the get-go when really you need to make sure that you don't have an expensive hobby, but you're actually building a business and a business generates income. And I think that that is, you know, one of those pieces that when you're starting out, keep it simple so that you can manage it because when you don't have the income, you can't outsource. Like you, you have to get some income coming in. And then when you start building and you're able to, you have that solid foundation and you're looking to build and grow, then outsourcing would be your next steps to continue to scale from there because you want to make sure that you're focusing on what is, again, those income generating activities that only you can do. And there get to be other things that, you know, like with the Pinterest services that, you know, I've built my entire business on. That's something that people outsourced to me because they had the foundation set. That was something that was not what they needed to be focused on to generate income in their business. They were working with clients. They were providing the services for their clients and Pinterest was bringing people to them. But that was just one of those things that was going to take up their time, which is why people hire, you know, Pinterest strategists and Pinterest virtual assistants and people to take care of their websites for them because they know that that is not the best use of their time. And so I think what it all boils down to either way is like, what is the best use of your time as the business owner versus, you know, what can just wait? And then what eventually will be outsourced to people that that's their expertise and they're going to do 95% of the time, maybe even 99.9, they're going to do so much better of a job than what you will spending hours and hours and hours working on your website. Yeah. Yeah. Because Sandra's helped me and bailed me out and I've gotten you to do work for me, you know, multiple times because that is what you do really, really well. And it has saved me tears and hours and heartache and frustration so many times because of, you know, bringing that help in for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, there's so many things that you don't have to do. Like I see so many people who are struggling with, um, you know, they think they have to be on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn and Pinterest and blogging no, and TikTok YouTube. and TikTok. I think there's and other things out there that I don't even really know about. Yeah. You just keep on going and it is not going to help you at all. Really. If you're trying to focus on all those things, you're not going to be making any type of impact in any of them. And so you're not going I would to any say, of them well. Right. Yeah. I would say focus on one and pick one and dive into it, get it going, Mm -hmm. get it, figure it out, streamline it, start making an impact. And then, I mean, you, like you said, you really need to grow on the, or focus on those revenue, um, tasks, those revenue growing tasks. And so then when you are able to, then you can hand that well-oiled machine off to someone to help you manage and then on the next thing. And, So, I mean, there's so many areas of business that are like that, where you can really say, do I really need this? Like, Mm -hmm. and it's the same with our expenses. Like, do I really need this tool? Do I really need that tool? Like, do I need to be paying monthly for this? There's so many things that you'll hear everyone give you different, different opinions about what you need and what you should have and what you should be focusing on. And really it comes down to like, what are your strengths? What, where's your ideal client hanging out? And then where do you really want to put your time and energy into and focus on something. Absolutely. So, I mean, that's like, I have about, I think 10 to 15 hours a week to work. And, um, so there's no way that I could get half of the things that I have to get done, done. If I'm spinning my wheels on things that don't have to really be done. Exactly. Having that discernment for where to put your money, you know, when you're first getting started and what do you really need to be doing are probably, that's probably some of the make or break stuff because you can easily burn out before you ever make any money in your business because Mm -hmm. you're trying to do all the things and then just pouring money into it with it not giving you any back in return can be really hard to sustain. So having that discernment and making those decisions about what's gonna be best for your business in each stage is critical for sure. Yeah, yep. For sure. Oh my gosh. We've covered so much good stuff. Is there anything else that you think that we really, I think the one thing that we 
touched a little bit on was the perfectionism. And I really wanted to talk about that because I know that I've heard over and over and over, and I felt the same way, like with working with kids um, and we've already blown this myth out of the water. My kids have been in the background of everything. You know, your kid came in the room is it doesn't have to have that cold corporate feel. And I prefer not having that cold corporate feel. I, you know, like knowing that if my kids need me, if something happens, that, you know, the person that I'm working with is totally going to understand. And, you know, vice versa, if, if your baby starts crying because they wake up from their nap, like, please just go get them. It's not a big deal. We can either reschedule or, you know, take care of the baby and we'll keep going. But, you know, just not having that fear of my kids shouldn't exist because I have a business. Like these things have to be separate because they're just not. The reason that we're here is because we want to be with our kids. And so it's never going to be separate. And so just not having that fear around um, like your kids showing up and that being an issue. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like if, if I'm on a potential client call with someone who's interested in working with me and, you know, it's that discovery call stage consultation and one of my children come in and um, if the person that I'm talking with, if that, like, if that bothers them so much that they decide they don't want to work with me, then I am a okay with that. Like 100%. Okay. Like, because I know that the people that I'm going to, like, I know my kids are going to come in on occasion or they're like, something's going to happen. Like it's inevitable. Something's going to happen. And so I need to know that the people that I'm working with are okay with that. Um, and I will say, I have worked with clients who are, you know, that I, I personally, I've had this myth that, you know, if, if I ever have a, a potential a discovery call consultation with a corporate man, like a man that's in the corporate world that wants a website done. Um, I've sometimes felt anxiety about like, oh my gosh, like, what are they going to think? Like if my kid comes in, you know, are they going to think less of me? But I will say I've, I've worked with quite a few like men in the corporate world who need websites for like side businesses or whatever. And they're all okay with like all the guys that I've worked with are okay with it. Like people in general are okay with it. And I think especially after 2020 and everyone having to work from home for a period of time almost. And so, um, people just realized like, we'll oh give God. a lot more grace with that now since nice. almost everyone has experienced it. I think that that has changed yeah. working from home forever. Yes, for sure. And so I would just say like, don't be afraid of, your real life being your real life. And if your clients are not okay with that, like I I do not try to make my consultations any different than my real life specifically because I want them to be able to experience that. And if that bothers them, that's okay. Like I'm just not the right person for them. And so don't be afraid to let your real life be your real life in your business as well. It will Um, be too hard to fake it. Oh yeah. Way too hard to fake it. And stressful. Yeah. If you're stressed about your kids coming in or something happening, like it's just not worth it. Um, not at all. Yeah. I've definitely experienced that. I would say the only other thing that I could think of would be just coming back to that whole, like, just keep going. Like, I'm sure you've, maybe you felt this way. I've, there's been so many times when I've had that thought of like, oh my goodness, maybe I just need to throw in the towel or maybe I just need to be done. Maybe, you know, whatever happened, something happened and I'm like, Oh, this is so hard. Like maybe I just need to be done. But if I hadn't kept going, I wouldn't have experienced the growth along the way. And it's really like the perseverance through those times, figuring things out, figuring out a solution to whatever the problem is that you're facing and then keep going because that's the only way you're ever going to, continue to see growth in your business is if you put through those things. That's the only way to truly fail is when you quit. Yeah. And I mean, everything else is a learning opportunity. Right. And so, you know, I mean, I'm not here to tell people if you're, if, if you just know that you're like, there are seasons for things. And so maybe it's the closing season of something for you and you're supposed to step into something else. Like, you know, that's, it's it, everyone's story is different, but mm-hmm. if you know that your business is your passion and it's what you are being called to do, then don't give up. Like don't stop. Yeah, exactly. 
Oh my gosh. So, so much good stuff. Thank you so much for sharing all of this. I know that there are just so many pieces that like, I'll, I'm going to go back and listen to it and, you know, just soak it all in as reminders for myself as well. But I really, really appreciate all of the conversation and the tips and just the, the real life, because I feel like that's what people need to see is that it's, it's not beautifully branded photos and, you know, high heels of fancy purses. You know, sometimes it's a mom that is doing what's best for her family. And, you know, sometimes you can find your passion along that path because like I started out of necessity and, you know, found things that I just love to do on the way of putting those first things first. And so, you know, wherever you are in your journey, you know, there's, there's something for you in this conversation. And I've just enjoyed every bit of it. Thank you so much. And I'll make sure that we get your right. information for um, carbon and clay and for you in the notes section, that way everybody can go and check you out because when you're ready for a website, so many amazing options with, with you and Melissa, I just love everything y'all done with that. So thank you so much. I appreciate you coming on and chatting with me. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for letting me be here. It's been fun. Yes. I love it. Thanks so much.